I'm 16 and my stepsister is 14. I've known my stepmom for a while and since I was 10, so we have a pretty okay relationship. She had a child from another relationship which is my stepsister. Both are somewhat strict with things like grades, curfew, internet access etc, and they're especially strict about boys which I hate. I can't even be friends with one without my dad demanding I either stop talking to them to distance myself from them. We live in a somewhat bad area, and my dad doesn't want me to possibly end up with a junkie or something. I've been secretly dating this guy since freshman year. He's a good guy, top of the class, and has a future for himself and respects my education. He's amazing and I love him. My stepsister recently had an emergency and she called me downstairs because some guy was acting weird at the time and didn't leave the front of the building. I went immediately and told her to go in my room and stay there, her bedroom window is near the front. I left my phone there I guess and was busy outside screaming at the guy to back off. I had some friends who lived nearby help with the situation. My stepsister snooped through my messages and saw everything and decided to immediately tell mom and dad. I got in big trouble. I got yelled at and had to take out my shelves from my room, had most of my books and art supplies, and my dad demanded to know why I was dating. I explained everything, and he just said that if I think this guy is so damn good, then I could flipping wait. I'm not allowed to leave the room except for necessities. Now I don't help my stepsister with anything. I feel that she had no right to do this. Need help with homework? Too bad. Need help cooking or you're hungry? Too bad. Need money? Too bad. Need pads or pills? Not my issue. Walking scared home? Not my issue. Anything at all, I will either ignore her, tell her I'm on punishment duty or just tell her that it's not my issue. I guess this got to her and at the dining table my stepsister screamed at me after I refused to pass the food plate. She started to yell about how my punishment is my fault, I told her that I'm not required to help her when she's going to be a snitch. Parents got involved, but I'm still not helping her, stepmom says that how I'm treating her is sick. That my stepsister had every right to report to them when I'm not following the rules, I told my stepmom that she can do that, but I can also lose my trust in her and just decide to not help her. Later evening my stepsis knocked on my door and said that she gets why I'm angry, but that she's just helping me. I slammed the door in her face and said that I hope she never has a situation where she needs me to keep a secret. My parents are punishing me further, I want to know if I am wrong or not. I get that's it's the rules, but I don't think she should be enforcing them. Your sister needed your help and you went to help in her a potentially scary and dangerous situation. She then stabbed you in the back, knowing full well there would be serious repercussions for you. Well I think you should get over the tiny stuff like passing the plate to keep the peace with your parents, who sound like terribly unreasonable people, you are absolutely under no obligation to lift a finger for anything meaningful that siblings would do for one another. Simply put, she decided to not treat you as a sister. It's only reasonable for you to treat her how she already decided to treat you. Not the idiot. You helped her, and in return she went through your phone. She is getting what she deserves, she went out of her way to do something to hurt you. What could she do in your phone that could be good to you while well, you got her out of a bad situation? In my opinion nothing. Far more than a snitch she is a backstabber, and it wasn't like she found you doing something really bad, you just had a boyfriend, that's it. As a little sister I snitched on my sister once, when I was your stepsister's age. Regretted it. My sister knows more about me than anyone. Our relationship changed and it really hurt and I knew I effed up. Now we're close again, but I learned my lesson. You're not the idiot for ignoring her because her actions negatively affected you and she doesn't have the right to expect to be treated the same. Hard lesson for her. I, 16, have a 14-year-old sister. I have my own car and since we both attend the same high school, I'm expected to take her to school with me. My sister, great as she is, has absolutely no sense of urgency when it comes to being on time. She'll deliberately refuse to get out of bed in the morning, takes half an hour minimum to do her hair and spend so much time primping that she forgets to do necessary things like packing her lunch or taking her medication. I have to go out of my way to wake her up several times in the morning because she refuses to use her alarm and has broken several alarm clocks by throwing them across the room when they go off. 
I, on the other hand, am annoyingly punctual, and it stresses me out to no end when I'm late because of her. Every single time I've been late this year has been because of her. I'll spend several minutes sitting in my car waiting for her before she comes running out, only to remember that she forgot something and will spend more time looking. I've been late a total of six times and end up cutting a close almost every day. My school has a policy that 8 tardies in one quarter gives an automatic three-day suspension. Despite constantly trying to talk to her about it and express that I need her to be on time, she hasn't made any effort. My parents are no help. One day, I was waiting in my car for her, nervously tapping my feet and waiting while she dallied. I looked at the clock, realized I'd have to leave right away to be able to make it on time, and decided I'd had enough. I backed out of the driveway and left without her. About 20 minutes later, I got calls from both her and my parents. My mom and sister were furious that I'd left her at home and that my mom had to give her a ride. My dad said he thought it was hilarious and supported me in leaving her. I think it was totally fair. This way, my sister had to face the consequences of her actions without dragging me down with her. However, many of my friends and family are adamant that it was an idiot move. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your mom is only pissed about the situation because she had to take the time out of her day to drive your sister. I'm sure from now on your mom will ensure that she is ready to leave on time, otherwise she'll have to get used to driving her separately. Not the idiot. My wife used to do something similar, taking her time getting out of bed, getting ready for work, etc. I had two kids going to two different schools and a very tight drop-off schedule. I made it clear when the car would be leaving, if she wasn't in it then I'd be back for her in an hour after drop-off was complete. Doesn't matter to me, if she's late for work, kids getting to school on time was the priority. If I can drag my bud out of bed every morning, feed everyone breakfast, and get three people to two schools and one job, before going to work myself, everyone else can work with me, or find their own ride. Your sister is finally facing consequences for her actions. My siblings did the exact same thing to me in my senior year, but I had no license, so I had to wait for them. I woke up took a shower, then took a 30-minute nap, then went downstairs and laid on the couch for 10 minutes, and then went to wait in the car. Every day they made me late and eventually I got a Saturday detention. It was the only detention I ever got. My mom called the school and made my brother and sister go to the detention as well. They are lucky I did not have my license back then, or I would have done what you did. Backstory. My parents had me very early, and I was raised mostly by my mom. When I was 12 my mom married my stepdad and had my baby sister, Emma, fake name, when I was 15. When it was time for me to move out and go to college my sister was very upset, I had to leave when she was asleep. That first year was really rough for her and she always begged our mom to call me so she could ask me when I was coming home. By the time I graduated undergrad she thought I was be moving back home and got sad again when I told I wasn't. I consoled Emma and told her that even though we weren't going to be living together, that I would always come to see, love, and be there for her. Fast forward to last week and I get a call from Emma, and she was in tears. She told me that her period hadn't come for the second time this month and she didn't know what due to. Naturally I asked if she thought she was pregnant, and she said she never had love. I asked if she spoke to our mom, but she said she was too afraid because our mom, who thinks no period equals pregnant, wouldn't believe her, and her religious and conservative father would raise hell. I told my sister that I would come get her in the morning. I did as promised, asked my mom and stepdad if it would be okay if I took my sister for the weekend, and they had no problem with it. Emma looked awful like she hasn't been sleeping well for days, and I was really worried about her. In the end we decided to go to urgent care, and if anyone asked I was her legal guardian. There ran some tests, and she was not pregnant. Once we had definitely proof I convinced Emma to tell them, so we could know what was really going on. I was with her for support, and when she told my mom and stepdad they were furious. They said that I had betrayed their trust, and I had no business taking Emma to a doctor without their permission. I tried to explain my reasoning, but they kicked me out. After a few hours I got a call from my mom saying that Emma's phone was taken away, they forced her to delete all her social media and said that I couldn't see her until I begged for their forgiveness and swore to always tell them what Emma tells me. 
I refused and said that, if anyone needs to beg it's them to Emma, because if she felt like she couldn't tell them her health concerns then they've obviously failed as parents. My mom was very upset by this and said that Emma wasn't allowed to talk to me until further notice. At the time I honestly felt like what I was doing was right but I'm not a parent and I'm starting to question if I was wrong. Am I the idiot? Your parents sound really controlling. I sure do hope Emma can get out of there when she's 18. There are all sorts of reasons a teenage girl might not get a period that are unrelated to pregnancy. Some girls might have irregular periods at first. If she has an eating disorder or has lost too much weight, she might not get her period. Your parents should know that. Your parents absolutely failed Emma if she was too afraid to talk to her parents about her medical concerns. She's lucky she has an older brother she can count on. But as others suggested, why not apologize to your parents and promise them whatever. Your mom and stepdad sound unhinged. They really overreacted to this. You did the right thing, you helped out your sister who was in serious pain and who was too scared to tell her parents what was happening, I'm also really not sure how good her love education is based on this story, but that's a problem for another time. You're right that your mom should be apologizing to her. I also hate that it was obvious to you that Emma looked exhausted, but it wasn't obvious to your mom and stepdad. When Emma inevitably cuts off your mom and stepdad later on, she'll feel better knowing you're in her life and on her side stand firm. Not the idiot, when you have a teenage sister the best thing you can do is make sure they trust you so you can help if there's something they're scared to talk to parents about. I took my sister to the doctor because she wanted birth control without our religious mother being rude about her choices. I took her to my doctor and got her on birth control and told her she should also use rubber. You did what you did to help and protect her. Be proud of yourself for being there for her. Everyone eats my food. If there are leftovers and takeout, my dad and sister will pick it off until there is just a little left for me. If I buy food and keep it in the fridge until my mealtime, they'll ask each other if they can eat it. For example, I had a sandwich. I ate half of it and literally announced, I am going to save this for dinner when I get back home, everyone acknowledges what I said. So I come home, it's gone. I ask where it is, my ma said that my sister ate it. I ask her why she ate it, she said our ma told her she could. So I go back and ask our ma why she told my sister she could have it and she says oh, I didn't think you wanted it. So I start leaving notes on my food. Then it's ops, sorry OP. I didn't see the note or well I was just so hungry but there's X in the fridge. It's not that our parents don't buy groceries either. But I work so much that by the time I can sit down and enjoy food, most of it's gone. It doesn't matter who bought the groceries, it's the same way, even when I buy them. So now I'm refusing to pay for anyone's food. Ever. I'm just so frustrated. I literally cried a little bit because I'm so tired of all the food being eaten. I'm so hungry, think I have tasty food at home, and it's gone. All I've been eating lately are bologna sandwiches and 99 cents instant ramen. Of course, everyone in my family thinks I'm being petty and immature. My sister is upset because she gets like $30 a week from her job, she's 15, and I get paid almost 10 times times that. I don't think I'm being immature. This is the only other way I can think of getting my point across. That all said, I would be lying if I said I didn't feel a tiny bit guilty. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You haven't said how old you are, but can you afford to move out, buy yourself a fridge and put it in your room with a lock on it? Your family are being the petty and mature ones and quite honestly have no respect for you. Seriously by yourself we call them bar fridges in Australia, see if you can get a lock for it and put it in your room. That way at least your food etc won't go missing. Not the idiot. I feel so bad for you right now. No one should have to be in this situation in which they can't even come home and enjoy food that they bought for themselves with their own money. If this was like an occasional thing, that would be fine however this is recurring, so your reaction is expected. Although you are not the idiot, be prepared for some backlash from your parents and sister. This might happen, and if you prepare for it now, it's probably better. Then again most likely nothing will happen, so you are fine. Is there enough space in the fridge for a small lockbox? You could put your leftovers in there and lock it. Another idea is a mini fridge for your bedroom. It sounds like either your sister and dad are overeating, or maybe there's not enough food in the house for the entire family. 
If your food doesn't require refrigeration, just store it in your room, see lockbox idea. I hope you are able to come up with a solution. You have every right to be upset. My sister-in-law, 25, lost her baby boy when she was seven month months pregnant with him four months ago. She made plans, bought clothes and prepared his nursery, even bought a few pack of diapers and bottles because, due to some health issues she'd been having, she decided to go with formula. It was absolutely devastating, especially for my brother, because he was looking forward to becoming a dad. I gave birth to my baby boy a month ago, while I was pregnant, my sister-in-law came to me and said she didn't know what to do with all the baby stuff she bought, so she decided to donate them to me since my husband is currently on deployment and is away from home, I was so happy and thanked them for their generosity. Then, while I was staying at my parents' house, my sister-in-law started bringing in stuff she bought after my baby was born and say that it had matched the shoes or something like that. She also brought in the formula even though I was breastfeeding and didn't need that, she said the formula was for when she feeds my baby and asked if it was okay, she and my brother would change the diapers and dress my baby, the clothes they bought and do mix and match. And how they would have dressed their deceased baby the same way. I started noticing, I got upset, not gonna lie, especially when my husband video chats and sees his son dressed in clothes that they picked. She's always holding him and would take him out of his nursery without telling me, she sometimes sleeps in our nursery saying the baby might need something. It went as far as refusing to call him by his name and gave him a nickname she was planning on giving her son like Chico. I finally snapped when she and my brother wanted to take him for a sleepover at their house. I yelled at my sister-in-law after she kept insisting and told her to stop trying to take my baby from me and treat him like her son, my brother lashed out at me and called me ungrateful while she was crying, telling him they needed to leave, my mom watched it all and sided with my brother, who said that I should pay for everything they gave me and that they didn't want to take this stuff back for my baby's sake. We haven't talked after the argument, my mom keeps talking to my sister-in-law and I could hear her cry on speaker, I felt guilty, but I all I wanted was to bond with my baby, and she was there all the time. Not the idiot at all. Your sister sounds like she's going through severe depression or other issues due to her loss and could benefit from counseling. I'm sorry that your brother sees nothing wrong with her behavior, because otherwise you could get him to discuss this with her doctor. You did the right thing to cut off contact. She could easily have become one of those distraught people you hear about who kidnaps another person's baby. Well sister-in-law is still grieving the loss of her baby that does not give her the right to try and be mommy to yours. Your baby is a month old and breasted. He does not need formula and definitely is not ready for sleepovers at someone else's house, her sleeping in his nursery is creepy. You need to limit her contact with your baby until she starts receiving therapy because she's using your child to replace her own and not coping properly. Do not let her spend so much time with your child and keep encouraging her and your brother to seek help for their loss. Run. Get out of that house. If mom is siding with them after they force themselves into your baby's life and then call you ungrateful when their obsession becomes completely unhealthy, you don't want to be around if that woman becomes unhinged. Because your mom won't even interfere on your behalf if they try anything they need therapy. Badly. And your mom needs to stay out of it. She's only enabling this.